Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a look at this one cell single cell battery balancer. The balancer itself is rather simple because you buy them in modules of one by one. As you can see here you have the cell connected to every other battery. They are balancing through a common line as well. I have been talking to this company for quite a while now and I have gotten to understand how they work. And in this review today I'm going to tear one of them down totally to see what's inside. To make sure that they do contain what they should contain. I'm also going to see a little bit how they are transferring the energy between themselves, but I'm not going to look into the efficiency. First of all, they are selling the stuff from AliExpress as well, and they are sold for 24 10 a piece. Worth noting today is that I did not get those two units for free, I did pay for them totally by myself. But I also have an offer for you guys in the end of this video. That offer will make you eligible to actually buy this unit here for roughly 20 USD a piece. The offer is only valid if you use the promotion code supply in the end. So what you need to do is take contact with them through this email up here. So first let's take a look at this page. They do sell it in 1S and 4S mode. And they are compatible to most of the lithium standard cells because what they do is just simple balancing. Uh, you have most of the information here. They even show you roughly how it is being balanced and I will also talk about that a little bit later in this video. The tech spec itself, they are stating 20 ampere hours to 1000 ampere hours. Um, that would most likely be fair. The 1000 ampere hours depends on how uneven the packs are. The battery can't count. Uh, yes, you need two or more, that's kind of the basic, and they will work perfectly fine for a 3S or a 7S, 8S, 14S, 15S, whatever you are choosing. They also have a version that are designed for lead acid, but in my case, I'm going to look into the lithium ion. Peak balance current is 10 amps. Uh, yeah, that. My, they might get up to that. I did see, I would calculate it based on a couple of amps when I tested it, but it actually depends on the difference between the cells. You can hook up a BMS to this system. Uh, I do suggest that you do that as well, that you do hook up something that monitor the cells as well, because this will only balance it. If you choose the model with the LEDs, then you will get some kind of display if they are or what cell are being balanced at the time. Here you will see how you could wire them up if you are choosing the forest balancer. And they are saying that you need to connect the balancer together first. I did not do that in my video. You will see when I do connect the balancer cable last. And it do work. But if you want a warranty from them, do not connect them in the other way around. So I have now connected everything up here as you can see. I have one of the balancers connected to one of the batteries over here. The other balancer is connected to the battery there. I have not connected them together right at the moment because I have some things to show you. This voltmeter here is connected to that cell and that voltmeter over there is connected to this cell. I have calibrated them, them together so they are measuring the correct values compared to each other. There are a couple of LED lights on those as well. I did order the one with LED lights and they show what the current state is. At the moment they are saying that they are in sync and they are nothing to discharge or charge between the batteries. But that's because this lead here is not connected. The interesting part here first of all, I don't know if you can hear it on the video because I have the charges going on the side. And that is the frequency that those are operating at. I hooked this up and I mean the sound, I can hear it. It's a quite high sound but not that high. And I measured it up to roughly 3.4 kilohertz. Very very annoying. That's the first thing. The second thing, as you can see I have two different batteries here. 3.26 and 4.1. So let's hook them up together. And you immediately see that that one went down, this one went up. This one is still green. 
and if you can see it you can see that this one went red on this side that means that this cell is being charged and it's being charged from this here the thing is what this system actually does is that it's a two-way communication system where it takes power here and transforms it up to this side and this one does the same but it bases the output and the frequency based on the voltage here so if this one is higher, the potential is higher, it will go to this cell here and back out and the other way around. It's a very very simple setup as I can see it. I have not measured how much current is going through. So let's hook this up again. I have the oscilloscope running. So let me explain what this is about. I'm measuring the cable in between the balancers and uh, you cannot see this now, but the one of them are currently running at 3.52 kilohertz, and the voltage between bottom to the top is roughly 41 volt, and that's 10 times the voltage on that cell. That's very very interesting to know. So what if we cook it up, and we suddenly see that the voltage drops down to down to 38 volt and that's the voltage on the high side on the high cell the frequency also went down to 3.28 kilohertz I'm not sure if the frequency is relevant at all I don't know but the voltage certainly is because it's the tenth of what's running through so the question is here what if you have more than 10 cells connected how will it handle that? Would it handle that? I don't know. I only have two units to test out and that's what I'm going for. They are working, they are doing their job. I do not know how efficient they are working. I don't know how much current are flowing through. So let's see if we get this piece apart. I will most likely destroy it, but that's a part of the process. So let me try to tear this down in pieces. So the first look of it, you can see, see the big inductor there. That's most likely on the output. And we can see that they did fill this up with gunk. That most likely look like some kind of DC-DC converter. I don't know. Let's try to pull this out somehow. So this is what we are left with guys. You have a coil there, you have the main board there, and you have what I think to be the Bose uh, converter board. As you can see there are plenty of components on this board. You have something that looks like a diode, and then you have 
one, two, three different type of circuits. Those, I, I'm not sure what they are, so I cannot say that. Not much on the back side. And then you have this bus, buck or boast controller. I do see the numbers slightly on those circuits, but not that much. Um, but due to the coil on this side, I'm pretty sure it's a Bose converter. So what it is that th this machine actually does? If you bring this one into picture as well. So basically you have the incoming leads from the battery here. And this one, what it does, it is taking those voltage and expanding them 10 times. So if you have 4 volt here, you have 40 volt on the bus. If you have another one here with 3 volt, it will produce 30 volts to the bus. But it, what it does, it goes and checks the bus. Is the bus voltage higher than its own? It will use energy from the bus instead. So it's a pretty smart topology and it works pretty well. Uh, would I recommend them? Yes, I would. Uh, I still think they are too expensive. If I compare this to the system I'm building, I mean, this is just a balancing system and they do the job pretty well. A proper system would be better that actually can monitor the voltages as well. In this video here, as you can see, I have just destroyed one of mine and the other one I don't have much use for for the moment. So if you want to help me out doing such videos like this where I actually tear things apart and really don't care much of what's happening to them, if so, please check below and you'll find my Patreon link and you will also find a direct PayPal link. Uh, if you like the video, please thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you much and see you next time. So basically if you want this discount, the discount of 18%, what you need to do is email sales underscore gna2010 at 163.com and you need to tell them that you are sent by DIY tech and repairs and you need to define if you want it with or without the LEDs. With this you would get them for as low as 20 US dollar a piece and that is I would consider a whooping good price. Don't forget to add your address where they should send the devices to you. Otherwise they might end up on my bench instead and you know what I do with them. I trust them. So thank you for watching today and Please like, subscribe, and if you want to give me something for doing this kind of work, feel free to do that. Thank you.